So in this clip I'll demonstrate data import in um, MATLAB. The data I'm going to import on Excel, data on an Excel sheet. Here's the Excel sheet, MSFT, XLSX. These are Microsoft share prices. In the first column we have date information. Second uh, column is the uh, adjusted closing price for that share. We'll do some stuff in a little script file. I've called that loadingdata.m. So in my folder I also have that Excel file, MSFT, XLS x here. So what actually happens if I double click on this? Now Excel being the clever software it is thinks Oi, someone wants to import data and indeed so you can see it's uh, busy it's working a little bit on here because this computer is fairly slow and it opens this import wizard and very soon we will see a little preview of the data which we want which we want to have imported and here we can see actually the share prices had two has two tabs here in the data tab it will show everything that MATLAB recognizes as a number on text data will be everything else but it can't display it here so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click next here you could choose whether you want to import both option both of these objects indeed we want to we click finish here and you can see that Excel has imported these two things so let's look at these First one is our vector with date, uh, with share prices. If we actually plot this, we can see the share price. We're just catching the tech bubble at the beginning of our sample. A tech bubble bursting, I should say. What's in text data? Text data is everything of the spreadsheet that has not been recognized as a number, and importantly, the dates uh, are also not recognized as a number. And you can see, can you see this matrix symbol means this is a number, and this curly brackets means this is actually MATLAB things is just text. So let us click this away. So that happened when we double clicked on the Excel file. Now often we will want to import data as part of a longer script. and We will want to do something with the data later. We're going to show how to do this now. Let me first just clear the memory and the screen. So what command do we need to use to actually achieve that? The command we use is called XLS read, XLS spreadsheet, or Excel spreadsheet, and read. We need to tell it which spreadsheet we want to read. That's assuming it's in the same folder as loading data. Otherwise, you have to include paths. And we are reading data off the sheet in our spreadsheet, which is called MSS. MSFT. If you don't specify the sheet, it will read the first sheet. Here in our Excel file, we actually only have one sheet, but that's called MSFT. So in this case, we could leave that away. You saw before that MATLAB actually produced two outputs. Uh, they were called data and text data. And if we did this, it will do exactly the same. Sometimes it may be useful to ask for a third output raw data. We'll see in a minute what that is. So let us just execute this file. So F5 to run this bit of code. And what you can see here is MATLAB produced actually three outputs, data, text data, and raw data, the three which we specified here. The first one is exactly the same as the data we saw before when we double clicked, just the share prices. The text data output, that was the second, is exactly what we saw before, just all the non-numerical information. Uh, you can see that has one text, the uh, numerical data had 3192 rows, and text data had 3193 rows because it has this header right here as well. And raw data is actually everything together, but just as text data. So here this one is basically text information, whereas in data the share prices are actually numbers. So if you now wanted to do anything with these prices, I'll put a semicolon so next time we run it it doesn't output everything. So now you could produce a new uh, variable, for instance, data2, but just if you wanted to do that for whatever reason, uh, in multiply the share price by 2, or you could say data log, and you could create the log of the data. So all of that 
would be possible. I highlight and run it and then we get new objects in our workspace in data2 and data log log this is now just the log of the share price so more interesting is what do we want to do with the dates we know the date information is here in text data so let's extract the uh, the dates that's text data and we know it's in rows 2 to the last row and in column 1. So if we run this we will get a new object dates and that just has the date information but it's still note this still a text it's still text information. So how do we transfer it? The two, the two ways how you can uh, deal with data in MATLAB, so it recognizes information as uh, as dates. I will call them dates num and dates vec. Okay, so actually I will comment this out for the time being. So dates num. Basically, what you need to do is the command is date num. And as input, you need to say what you want to transfer into dates. Well, that's our vector dates. But now you also need to tell tell it in what format the dates come. And if we look at our dates, you can see it's day first, month then, and year then. And we'll basically say exactly this. Say exactly this. And the way how you do that is in single inverted commas, day. Then they are separated by a forward slash month, another forward slash, and then four digits of year information. So let's just run that bit of code. Dates num, let's look at this. And what we see is just numbers. Well, basically what this number means, 730488, that means that the 3rd of January 2000 is the 730,000, 730,488th day since the 1st of January 0, in the year 0. Okay, that's what the date num format uh, does. There's a second date format, it's called the date vec format. We can, uh, the command here is date vec, and again we could either translate our dates uh, vector and we could specify exactly the same information. We'll again have to tell MATLAB how the date information is pre presented, in this case day day, month month, year 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 year, or, and that's the easier way since we've done that transformation already, we can just translate from our dates num format. So let's do that. We'll just perform that last line and that will create a new object dates vec. So you can already see it has the same number of rows, 3192, but six columns. So what are these six columns? Let's look at this. Well, basically what MATLAB has done is in the first column we now have the year information for every date. In the second column the month information. In the third the date information. Note the first day was the 3rd of January 2000, so we have year 2000, month January, day 3, and then there are three more columns and they are hours, minutes, second. But we didn't provide any that any such information, we'll do that in a minute, and uh, then it will just set everything to zero. So if you now have uh, we now have date information as MATLAB, so now we can do calculations with this. Let's introduce actually another date and let's call it date underscore m, meaning of that will be uh, obvious in just a second. So date num, and now I just use a particular date, 0719. 18. Okay, 18th of July 
18. Actually, let me enter this in a different format, like the American way, that is month, day, year. Now, if I do that, I should also tell MATLAB that this is the way how I enter the data. So, let me run this. So, now we have a new object, date underscore m, and that's just one scalar, one number, 700,734. Now, I could ask, okay, what's, how much days, for instance, have gone from the last date in our dates vector to or between how many dates have been between the last date in our dates vector and this particular date. Let's call it just difference. As you can guess what the significance of this date is. It's uh, in fact the birth date of one of my heroes. Anyway, first we'll check how old that hero was at the end of our sample. We want to look at the... this is easiest now done in the num format, in the date num format, so we want to look at the last day in our sample minus dates underscore m and 5 so 30, 34,385 days 34,385 days how many years is that? well we could just uh, 3, 4, 3, 8, 5 divided by 3, 6, 5 so my hero is about 94 years old. Well, it turns out this is Nelson Mandela. Okay, he was born on the 18th of July, 1918. So you can see, you can now do calculations with uh, with these dates. Now the very last thing, are uh, two more things I want to mention. Firstly, how do we import data with CSV files? Well, the command you should use is uh, CSV read. And, but I'll just say read the help function, okay, help CSV read. I will give you details or read the discussion of this uh, section in the Eclair web page. What I do want to do, however, is I'll delete all this, I don't need that. I want to import the data for test XLSX instead. Test XLSX. We only have one sheet on there, so we can leave that away. First, I clear all. So let's import these data. So let's look at the raw data because we know this is this is how the spreadsheet looks like. Okay, it's actually a lot of empty empty cells data is really only in the first six information so we have again a date information but this time we have date with times okay then we have share prices in fact it's uh, the first few observations of the Microsoft share price and we have another text information that could for instance be different shares okay it's not I just made this little file up so the data what has it recognized as numerical data? Well, only these five observations. So if you look at data, that would just be that five, these five pieces of information. So what about the interesting thing will now happen with the date information? What I'm going to do is I'm going to translate this into datesVec format. So we have datesVec of text actually it's xt data and we know the data are in rows 2 to 6 in the first column and now again we have to specify the format in which they come but I uh, will be the same as before, day, month, four year pieces, but now there's time as well, so we have to specify the hours, 
the minutes and the seconds and that's if you look at raw data that's exactly how the data are presented with colon separators and the times and important here is that the HH, MM and SS for the uh, for the clock is actually capitalized otherwise it can't differentiate the month and the minutes okay so let's do this uh, five to evaluate dates back here it is okay say so year month day hour minute second and now you can work with this you can calculate the difference between these, how many seconds are they different and so forth. Uh, lastly I want to show you how this date information looks like if you use the date num format so we're going to say date num again we could have exactly the same input here or since we already have the information in the dates Vec. Uh, vector we can do this so evaluate that dates num should show up here okay so you can now see that actually oh, uh, good format long so it shows me the full information so you can see here at uh, times e to the fifth so we need to move this by five so now we don't have full we don't have integer numbers as we had before when we didn't have time information but now it has it stays seven hundred and thirty thousand four hundred and eighty eight point three seven and that point three seven that's just the fraction of the day okay so the, for the first time at 8.54 in the morning about 37 percent of the day have passed. That's basically what this information says. So even if you have time information both dates num and dates vec uh, formats are exactly the same. So this is all I wanted to do in this video.